Is your battery charged? Because your castmate Tyler came on here with 20% battery. So is yeah, my your battery, battery charged? My, my battery my battery's good. Okay. Please and thank you. <laughs> yeah, we're All right, good, so we're first, good. So first and foremost, where are you have you been spending this quarantine? I've been in Miami. Um, okay. I live I live in LA and I live in Miami. My permanent residence is, is in Miami. Um, honestly, I'm never really here that much because I'm always in LA working and, and uh, hustling. But you know, um, obviously, it's not a good reason to be home. But but I'm glad to be home for a little bit. I've been here since like 2004, so mm -hmm. I've been here for a minute. Um, but I've been here just you know grinding, working. Uh, I'm about Zoom called out. You know, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> you know, like everybody else is. But no, nah, it's it's been cool. I've gotten some some good work done. Are you getting dressed for these Zoom calls or are you only dressed from the waist down? <laughs> no, you know, I find myself rushing to the Zoom call in my own house. <laughs> That's the yes. funniest part. You know, no matter what, whether you're at home or whether you have a meeting uh, across town, it always seems like you're rushing. You know what I'm saying? And my office is literally like right over there, you know, <laughs> from my bedroom. So I'm running into my to, to the office to try to, you know what I'm saying, get on the Zoom call because I don't want to be that guy. But uh, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm about Zoomed out. I'm ready to get, I'm ready to get back to to normal at some point. Right, in real life. Like, hey, yeah. how you doing? Let's grab a yeah, cup of coffee. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I can totally understand that. Now, I have to ask, I see all of your posters of you behind you. Oh, and, yeah. But we've we've gotten to know Thomas the actor. So how was, how was that transition for you? Because you went from being, like, the star in football to uh, now the rookie in Hollywood. Yeah. Um, you know what? It, it wasn't as difficult as I thought it would be. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it's like anything else, the harder you work, um, the more dedicated you are, the better prepared you're going to be, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And so for me, it was just um, getting in classes, um, understanding how the industry works, uh, just networking, you know, meeting some really cool people, mm -hmm. like-minded people, um, and then really just, you know, being committed. And, and that's similar to football. You know, it's the same thing. You have teammates, you have um, a game plan, you have a playbook, which is like a script. Um, right. You know, you have practice, which is like classes. Um, and then it's game time when you're on set. So there was a lot of similarities between football and, and acting that made the transition a lot easier, you know, than I thought it would be. Oh, but yeah. it, it's been a lot of fun. It's been, um, I wouldn't say easy, but it's definitely been smooth. Did anybody try to discourage you from doing that? Because sometimes, like, the whole athlete now actor thing can become a little cliche. Did like, yeah. did like your team try to say, no, let's try something else or, or anything like that? Did anybody try to discourage you? No, they didn't because I actually started acting after I retired. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and plus I wasn't really, I played football, but I wasn't really like a football player. You know what I mean? Like, like I had a, um, a record label uh, and I had to deal with Universal. So I had artists I was managing and producing uh, music for. Um, so I didn't get any of that, you know, and because right. I retired and I was like, okay, what am I going to do now? Uh, I just kind of fell into it, um, just working on a random project. And, and the uh, um, the publicist for the show was like, hey, you have some raw talent. You need to take this serious. Mm -hmm. I was like, uh, I don't know where to go. I know <laughs> I, I don't want to be in L.A. I want to stay at home for a change in Miami because I was on five different teams. So I was always around the country. I was never here. Yeah. Um, but she convinced me to get an agent. So I got an agent in New York. Uh, the agency submitted me for some some auditions. Uh, I went and I booked a couple of roles early, which gave me some confidence. Um, but no one discouraged me. You know, what I mean, honestly, I mean, I'm the type of person if I wanna if I wanna do something, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. You know, regardless of of what um, you know someone says or thinks, because um, I don't put myself in a box. You know, football is football, acting is acting, music is music. You know, what I mean, it's it's, it's all different um, right. to me. You know, what I mean, so. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Have you um have you gotten used to the ups and downs of Hollywood, like the no's versus the yeses and that whole audition process? Um, I don't think you ever get used to getting told no. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I definitely have gotten used to um I've gotten used to the unpredictability. You know what I mean? Because football is very predictable, you know. Um you know who you're playing before the season starts, you know what True. division you're in. Um, you know how many, you know, games you need to win to get in the playoffs, then you know if you lose, you're out. You know, where Hollywood, you know, one minute you 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 get told no on like five different auditions or something, right? And then all of a sudden you get an email from somebody and they're like, Hey, we want you for this role on this uh huge show or this yeah. feature film. And you're like, wait a minute, like I just got told no five times. So right, that's right. what I had to deal with in, in the beginning. 
but that pushed me to really like uh create my own uh production company so i started my own production company because i was like you know what i'm tired of people telling me no i'm tired of people <laughs> telling me you know what i'm saying i'm not whatever they need and so i started my own production company with my producer partner daisy laray uh called midnight train productions uh we started writing our own scripts our own tv pilots feature films um we just produced a short film that won best short at uh the bronze lens film festival nice uh, congratulations ago. yeah we started in it me and, and daisy um, so I'm just focused on right now, um, producing my own content so I don't have to get told no, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, that makes total sense. I hear no so much. It's like, it's like, oh, okay, well, I'm gonna go eat a hamburger now or something. Like, you just yeah. get used to it. It becomes yeah. background noise after a while. Yeah, you, you have to have thick skin, you know, but I think that's what, um, football allowed me to have, uh, thick skin in life because it's a very tough sport where everything is critiqued. I mean, you could have a great game and lose. And it wouldn't have been my fault, but somehow it's still my fault because I'm on the team. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? So coming into acting and, and, and the entertainment industry, um, I'm used to being, you know, critiqued heavily. Um, it's easier, actually, because, you know, in football, I'm critiqued by a stadium, 80,000 people. <laughs> <laughs> people. In real watching, time. <laughs> yeah, real time. People watching it on TV, at every bar across the country. I mean, I was fortunate enough to play um, – then the Pro Bowl, Super Bowl, you know, the biggest games, AFC Championship, NFC Championship. So everybody in the country is watching uh, your rise or your demise in real time. Mm -hmm. And you got to hear about it. You know what I'm saying? So this is a lot easier of a space than that than that is. I never thought about it from that angle. And I probably, that is a lot of pressure. Every, every, yeah. that's, a, that's a lot. That's a lot. Okay. Okay. I never thought about it like that. Um, so we've seen you on Being Mary Jane, Straight Outta Compton, Luke mm -hmm. Cage, and now P-Valley. Yeah, where you exactly. May. May. <laughs> yeah, I play in May. I'm from Louisiana. I think I grew up with like six mains. Oh like yeah. <laughs> I, I I I've never known or met anybody named Maine in my life. Um, I saw I saw all the 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 memes when it was when they were talking about Terrence uh, Terrence Howard. Uh, I guess he, he, was, he was, how he says Maine, and they, they they had all these you know memes, but I never met anybody named Maine. So. It's pretty crazy that I never met anybody named Maine, and now everywhere I go, people call me Maine. What's up, Maine? It's, it's weird. What's up, Maine? Yeah, I'm Maine now. I've, I've officially changed my name to Maine. So tell yeah. us a little bit about your character on P Valley. Um, for those of you who have not uh, out there, Exo Nicole World had a chance to see P Valley. It is on Stars. Uh, my character on on P Valley Maine is a super country guy. He's uh, <laughs> very country. I'm from Virginia, so I, I have. Um, I had my accent, Virginia accent, was a lot more thick when I was at home when I mm -hmm. before I left to go to, uh, to college and and then play football. But um, my accent wasn't like this. <laughs> yeah, that's a whole different accent. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. It's a, it's a lot different because you know a lot of the words that Maine says, uh, I don't even know what I'm reading when I read the script, and so I have to have the dialect coach like. Yo, what is what is this? Oh, mean? so it's written it's written in the script in the dialect? Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's very specific. Katori Hall is brilliant. She's a brilliant writer. Um, she knows how she wants each character to talk, move, the essence. Um so basically, you know, Maine is a is a you know, a, a country guy. Um, he's the next door neighbor of Brandy Evans character, Mercedes, who's the lead. Um, they have history, you know, they they've been friends for a while. Uh you don't see that yet, but but eventually you'll see it. Um, but he's kind of like the guy that, you know, he's the plug. You know what I'm saying? He 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 kind of is into some street stuff, right? Uh, he's that local guy that you know if you need something, you can get it from him. You know what I'm saying? So when you first meet him, uh, he's got on an ankle monitor. So he's on house arrest. Uh, but he still figures out ways to get to where he needs to go. Um so the character is a really dope character. I love it because as an actor, anytime you can play a character that, that allows you to um, stretch your legs, you know, in regards to like an accent um, to show range, I, I take on all characters like that because that's why I'm in my career. You know, I've, I've been fortunate enough to do some really, really cool projects, play some cool roles. Um, but now, you know, it's time for me to take it to the next step, to the, to the next level. Um, it's kind of like, I look at it like going from, you know, JV to varsity. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, if we compare it to football, it's like going from JV to varsity. So being able to play a character like Maine and, and, and have that accent, um, you know, it's a lot of studying. 
Um, and it, it just makes you a better overall actor because you're committing to something that you've never done before. Right. And then those that commitment just pushes you further to commit to other things and other things. That's one thing I love about acting is like it's never ending. You know what I mean? In football, you have, um, you know, a ceiling. You know, mm -hmm. your body is like, listen. This shit hurts. <laughs> yeah. Or, 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 yeah. Or your mind is like, like for me, in football, I knew going into my, my 12th year, I was like, Nah. Really? And it's just something that just hit me. Like, I played football from the time I was eight years old until 33. So oh, wow. you don't ever think you're going to not want to play. And then all of a sudden, I woke up one morning and was like, nah, this ain't it. And and it wasn't even season. That's you know what I'm saying. So you went the whole next season with that yeah. knowing. Knowing this was it, you know. Um, knowing this was my last year. And, and so... Uh, you know, you know that there's a uh, uh, an ending at some point. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And in acting, there's no ending, and that's the beautiful thing about it. You know, as you grow and evolve as a person, then you can grow and evolve into different characters um, and different experiences, um, which I always say has been therapeutic for me. You know, acting has been therapeutic because coming from football, you you you're really a one dimensional person, mm -hmm. job wise. You know, what I mean, I'm playing football. There's a certain mindset you have to have. There's certain actions. Um, certain personalities, certain type of uh, energy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and with acting, the, that's the one thing that's totally different is you have to be um, a very different person. You know what I'm saying? A very how different you, person. How would you like to see Maine and Mercedes grow? And what scoop are you going to give me? Uh, how would I like to see them grow? Yes. I would like for Maine and Mercedes uh, maybe to possibly, you know, explore some some uh, spaces they haven't really been in that, mm -hmm. that they, they might be interested in. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Maybe, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, they're close already. I think some of the best relationships happen when you're really good friends with someone, you know. So Maine and Mercedes have history. They go back. You know, they have their best interests at heart. So uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll... Maybe we would, we, I'd like to, I guess I'd like to see them maybe explore possibly more than just uh, a friendship. Mm -hmm. You look down when you answer that question. <laughs> you got a little bashful on me, too. So you know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Because, uh, you know, I think, I think it's a dope relationship that they have. And what I love about uh, Katori's writing is that she's not on, so on the nose. You know what I'm saying? She, she gives people uh, enough to tease them. And then all of a sudden, you know, she lets the people kind of dictate what they want to see, which is, it takes a lot of courage as a writer, you know, um, mm -hmm. and, and confidence because, you know, there's certain dynamics that people would want to see. But at the end of the day, you know, sometimes you gotta, you gotta wait, you gotta have a little patience, you know? Mm -hmm. So we have to see, we have to have some patience to see where the character goes. But right now yeah. we're going to get in your business. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 used to you, I'm used to you being in my business from the steam room. I have I have flashbacks every couple of months. It's okay. It's okay. I took care of you as an interviewer. No, it was fun. Him. It was fun. I'm ready. I took care of you. I'm so, ready. by the way, you just had a birthday. So happy birthday, happy belated Thank birthday. You. That makes Thank you a you. you're a Leo, right? Yeah, I'm a Leo. I'm like, yeah. What's that eyebrow thing? Yeah, I'm a Leo. I don't know. Happy. Just something something about saying I'm a Leo. You know, just. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I like, I like, yeah, I like Leos. My, you know what? My, my family, there's, I have uh, five sisters, a brother, obviously my mom and my dad. And out of nine people in my family, five of us are Leos. Oh, wow. So my, yeah, my mom's birthday is August 9th. My brother and sister are twins. There's the 14th. Mine's is the 19th. My dad's is the 20th. And my grandfather's was the 21st, three days in a row. Well, there you All go. Leos. Yeah. There you go. So do you have like a family? Well, not right now, but usually like a one big family celebration for everyone? Um, not really because we're spread out. You know, I'm in L.A. most of the time. Yeah. Um, you know, but, you know, it's that Leo energy. You feel it. You know what I'm saying? So it's cool. Got gotcha, you. Got gotcha. you. So are you currently in a relationship? No. Is there someone that thinks they're in a relationship with you? No. I don't I do not do that. That's dangerous. Okay. That's a dangerous game. So you're a very yeah. clear communicator. Because I, that's really? always my follow-up question. Is there someone that thinks they're in a relationship with you? Um, I'm very, I'm very clear. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's probably 50 to maybe even 75% of the problem. 
is, is that people aren't clear. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, because when you have clarity, then it allows each person to make their own decision. Right. You know what I'm saying? Based off of what they think is best for them versus what you want. And and um, and honestly, like, I don't want that smoke. You know <laughs> There's a lot I, of energy that comes with that. Yeah, it is. And, and, and it's, a, it's a lot of responsibility mm -hmm. um, because, you know, there's always, you know, karma is real. You know what I'm saying? If your intentions aren't good, um, it's going to come back and, and you don't know how, you know what I'm saying? And I truly believe that, especially in relationships. When's the last time you were in a relationship? Um, what, describe relationship. Ah, see, see, see. <laughs> I said relationship. Your mind said entanglement. I saw oh, that. No, 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 no. Oh, entanglement. <laughs> no, like relationship. Okay. For, for yeah. this particular conversation. Okay. Thomas, person, we agree to not see other people? Oh, probably, um, mm, I don't know, maybe six years. Six oh, wow, okay. Years. Yeah. Okay, yeah. now how does that work? Because you're a sex symbol, let's just go ahead and call it what it is. I'm sure women are throwing themselves at you every day of the week and twice on Sunday. How do you manage to not be in a relationship? Is this just something that you're not looking for right now? You just haven't met the right person? I think when I, when I retired, um, that was the first time that I had a chance to really not be in a relationship. I, my mom and dad have been together almost 50 years. Oh, wow. That's you cool. know what I'm saying? Yeah, so that's what I saw growing up. So that's what I assumed would be my situation at this point. And so that's kind of what I strive for, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Um, I had a girlfriend in college. Um, then I had a girlfriend um, when I, my, like my second year in the NFL. It's like every, you know, couple of years I had a girlfriend and, mm -hmm. and in my mind it was, this is the one, this is the one, right? Um, so I played my 12 year career with the, the majority of the time I had different girlfriend. I think I had over the course of my 12 year career, maybe one, two, three three real girlfriends like three like okay. exclusive just us like i'm seeing you as my wife like we preparing for that life you know what i mean mm -hmm. um but i didn't realize like what i didn't realize when i retired was that i didn't really have a chance to like know me you know what i'm saying and, and, and figure myself out and not follow this path that you know i had i had seen you know my, my, my parents follow you know what i mean because that because at the end of the day um you got to be happy in, in yourself, you know what I'm saying? And I think a lot of people put pressure on themselves based off of their environment, their experiences, or what they see other people doing, you know what I'm saying? And and for me, when I retired, it was like, whoa, I'm not playing football anymore. Uh, uh, I fell into acting, something that I never thought I would do, mm -hmm. which opened up a whole other world of opportunities, but also opportunities to, to find out who I am as a person. Because as a football player, I mean, there's a switch that comes on that's like, it's a, it's an irrational job, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. very, you know, so you have to be a certain kind of person to, to do that job, and it's hard to turn that switch off. Um, what I mean by that is like, you know, I was very intense. Um, I was very impatient. Um, you know, I, I didn't, because the world I live in is so judgmental and, yeah. and, and critical that I took a lot of that into my personal life and, and into some of my relationships, you know what I'm saying? And I didn't know I was doing it until, mm -hmm. until I was out. Mm -hmm. And then I really didn't know I was doing it until I started acting and, and realizing um, the technique that I was using was really helping me like strip me down as a, as a, as a person, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and understand who I am as a person um, dealing with, you know, any type of, trauma or or um you know anything that i have, have chosen not to dealt with because as a football player you 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 taught not to be weak not to show weakness not to show vulnerability because right. we can smell it mm -hmm. on the field i know if i hit you i know if you hurt even if you I, i'm looking yeah. i know you hurt yeah so we, we taught to smell that but we taught not to give it off and that's not reality it's not real life that that's not humanity you know what i'm saying and acting taught me how to be in a way a human again you know what i'm saying and so i think because of that i realized that i 
still need to figure out exactly what I want. And, and in the meantime, focus on a new craft that's helping me grow and evolve as a person, which is, which is acting. I'm meeting new people. I'm, I'm ex having different experiences. I'm playing different characters with different backstories. So I'm having yeah. to learn a lot. Um, it's just been an incredible experience. And, and when it comes to relationships, I think that, um, you know, anything can happen, you know, you never, you, you never know. Mm -hmm. But I do think that if you're not ready for that, um, then you don't need to waste somebody else's time. You know, we'll snap that. Okay. Yeah. Can we pull that clip. That's a clip. I'm going to use it on my <laughs> Bumble profile. You don't need to waste anybody's time. Um, yeah. So what do you know your love language? You seem to know yourself very well, which is a beautiful thing to see. Um, do you know your love language? Um, I've heard of love languages, but I've never. So there's um, words of affirmation. Like you need to be told positive things from your partner. Quality time, receiving gifts, acts of service, and physical touch. Mm. So uh, I need to pick one of those. I mean, if you feel like you identify with one, as your. I mean, language. I think I think I think I identify with. Uh, I think I identify with kindness. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because I think I think kindness is the root of service, probably. Yeah. Active service. Mm -hmm. Because I'm a very, very selfless person. You know what I'm saying? I, I grew up, um, my motivation to make it to the NFL wasn't for me to be an NFL all pro or anything like that. It was because, you know, I wanted to be able to um take care of my family. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. and, and that was my motivation. Mm -hmm. And and it mm -hmm. still is my motivation in a, in a lot of ways. Um, you know, but I definitely think that, you know, me being a selfless person and a giver, you know, um, dealing with someone that's the same way is very uh, attractive. Yeah. For me, no, you know what I'm saying? Um, because I think that that's the core of me. So it has to be the core of my relationship. So if, if you're not like that, there's a high chance that we might not, might not click. And that's fair. Um, you have five sisters. Five sisters, yeah. Which I Good can't thing. even imagine what that was like. What did yeah. your sisters and your mom taught you about relationships? I owe, <laughs> I owe the majority of my, uh, I've dodged a lot of bullets because of them. They're like okay. my angels. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When you when you have that many women, black women in your life, uh, they're gonna tell you what they think. Uh, they're gonna be honest. Mm -hmm. Um and and I, I'm listen I'm the middle child right I'm the middle okay. kid I'm I'm 42 but I have two older sisters that treat me still like I'm little the little brother <laughs> you know and 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 I'm a proud big brother I have three younger sisters mm -hmm. so I I kind of fit in this weird space that a lot of men I'm not sure fit in which gives me a different perspective uh on women um i've had girlfriends that are older than me i've had girlfriends that are a couple of years younger than me i've had girlfriends that are my age but every girlfriend i've had i've had a sister that's her age okay as kind of like a guide in a way you know, everybody's <laughs> different, you know what I'm saying? but i kind of i kind of had a little cheat sheet you know um so a lot of the relationships that i was in what i couldn't see they saw mm -hmm. and and if you don't have those people around you that love you enough to be honest then, um, you know, at the end of the day, you, you might miss something. And next mm -hmm. thing you know, you're, you're locked in with somebody. So, so when your sister, your mom said, pulls your shirt and they're like, Thomas, she's not, or, or pay attention to this. You t do you uh, immediately take heed? Or you like, not, immediately, not immediately, not immediately, <laughs> not immediately. Immediately, I'm like, I mean, come on. Like, you know, you did this to the last one. Like, you know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, but at the end of the day, like, they they weren't overbearing either. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? They weren't like nosy and in my business. It was like, you know, that type of thing. <laughs> That's the look. You know That's what I'm saying? Yeah, and it's like, what? What what does that mean? You know yeah. what I'm saying? And and so it was it was it was a really, really good situation for me to be in because being in the NFL, um, having access to money, fame, all those type of things, you know, um, there's a lot of things that you might miss, you know, and especially me, you know, I'm coming from a very uh, humble beginning. You know, my mom and my dad were coal, mine, were coal miners. My mother worked oh. 19 years underground in the coal mines. Oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? And so when you grow up in an environment like that where you're very humble and, um, you know, you, you expect people to be a certain kind of way, um, 
once you, you know, get out of that environment and you get into like the real, real world, you know, it's cold, it's a, it's a cold world. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people uh, don't see you the same way you see them. And um, I was fortunate enough to not have to learn that the hard way. And, and a lot of that I owe to my mom and to my sisters for, for you know, being being there for me. And um, at the end of the day, you know, that saved me from a lot of situations. And, and not saying that all of my girlfriends were 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 bad women, but not at all. You know what I'm saying? I actually wouldn't change anything because I learned so much from them. And then it allowed me to actually. They also called me out too. And you need that. Everybody needs that. Not I'm not saying Thomas yeah. specifically, but I think everybody in a relationship needs yeah. somebody who can yeah. who can call Definitely. you out. Definitely. And, and, they and in out. the right way. Not yes, just to it, call you out to stick it to pick at you, but like Right. Right. It, it wasn't in a judgment. Right. It wasn't in a judgmental way. It was like wrong. Mm -hmm. And I know if they say I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, you know what I'm saying? But growing up with, with that many women as a man, it just it 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 you it it, ha it it creates a different relationship with women that I have. Um, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I have uh you know, I mean I have five beautiful black sisters and a mom. Um so my relationship with black women is very important. Like any black woman that's in my life especially. Um it's a very important relationship and, and I value it. You know, everybody every black woman that I'm that I encounter even if it's business, you know, I, I develop a friendship with them. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I can't just do business. Even my, my publicist, Katrina Boswell, is like my my one of my best friends. Um, Laura James, who's the CMO of my tech company, is like one of my best friends. Um, and I think that comes from growing up with so many women and and feeling their pain and, and in real time seeing what they go through and seeing their experience. Because when they hurt, I hurt. You know what I'm right. saying? And that's something you can't you can't turn that off. Um, so, you know, I'm very grateful for them. You know, I mean, like I said, you know, they they were there for me in, in some of these relationships that, uh, you know, whether I wanted them to be or not, they were there. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're there. But, 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 I, but I'm, I'm where I am now because, you know, they were my angels that protected me and got me to this point, so. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so when you're, let's, let's, let's go to some, some, some of the dating questions here that we have on EXO Man. So when you're dating, what's, or, or, out and about, what's the first thing you notice about a woman? The first thing I notice, um, her confidence. Mm -hmm. Like, um, it, should, she, should she should she approach you to ask for your number? Um, I don't I don't think it's I don't think it's like confidence in in you know her approaching me. I think it's just her energy says, you know, I believe in myself. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's it. That's attractive because I, I feel like in in whatever relationship I end up in, it's got to be with someone that um, can motivate me too. Do you want? I'm not gonna say do you want. Do you like when women slide into your DMs? Like, do you answer DMs? Um. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. I mean, I check DMs and and you know um, you know it's it's tricky. You know what I mean? Because you just never know who has what intentions and and stuff like that. But you know, at the end of the day, you know, we're all human, you know what I'm saying? And regardless of what our job description is, you know, I mean, um, you know, we're as men and women, you know what I'm saying? We, we connected, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and there's just natural attractions to certain people. Um, it's, cra it's crazy how social media, you don't have to meet certain people, you know, and all of a sudden, you know, you're in a relationship with them. You know, right. so many people that get, have gotten married from just meeting somebody off a DM, you know what I'm saying? It's, but it just shows you how powerful that connection is between men and women. Absolutely, you know absolutely. Yeah. Look, everybody's in here like they're about to go DM you. <laughs> <laughs> what? What's a good DM line? Like, what's the okay? So, if someone's like trying to make it past the DM phase, like, what's a tip for them? Um, past the DM. Like a good, phase. like a good opening line. Now, all of y'all out there at Exxon y'all all can't go use this line now. Okay, this is just your this is like um, a template. This is like the resume template. Yeah, okay, you got it. Yo, you it. You are not playing with these questions. <laughs> Come, I mean, uh, I mean, we like let family. Me, I mean, let me, think, let me think. What's a good line? Um, I don't, you know, I don't buy into line. I don't, you know, what I'm saying, I'm not one of those gimmick people. It's like, you know, you could just say hi. You know oh, what I mean? Okay. Like, yeah, you could just say hi, or you could just say, you know, 
hey, uh, saw your page and whatever, or hey, you know, I like your work, or, you know, I, I, to me, social media is, you know, it, it's just, you know, a platform to connect, you know what I'm saying? I don't really have a particular, um, you know, thing that I respond to, you know, I mean, there's things I don't respond to, you know what I'm what saying? Not but, respond to, what's too much? Uh, people just, you know. Uh, Naked pictures? Um, yeah, because I feel like that's not, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you coming across way too, you know what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's like your intentions could be bad. And, and so, yeah, that's not, that's not something that I'm really going to respond to, you know what I'm saying? But I'm a very easygoing person. You know, I've been in the, in the public eye since I was 21. I got drafted. Yeah. Um, you know, I was the seventh overall pick at 21, and I was fortunate enough to get a really good contract. Um, you're talking about 22 years I've been in the public eye between football and acting. And I'm the same person that I was when I was 15 years old in my mind. You know what I'm saying? I've evolved right. and grown as a man, obviously, but the core of me is a very humble person. And, and this is just my job. You know, acting is, is my job. Football was my job. So I, sometimes I have a hard time realizing you know, what I've done in football and what I'm doing in acting because to me, it's just what I love to do. You know what I'm saying? But I know what comes with it um, as well. But, you know, the funny part about it is acting, acting really opened my eyes up to, to who I guess I really am. Because in football, you know, you're getting paid for your ability on the field. You know what I'm saying? And so in acting in Hollywood, you're getting paid for your brand. That is so true. Two, that dra is true. two drastically different uh, true. realizations, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And, you know, it really woke me up. It was like, yo, listen, like, you know, you <laughs> say football, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is a 24-7 job. Like, <laughs> you know, it, you know, in football, if you get a, you know, you get a parking ticket or something, and you got too many parking tickets, you get arrested, you're still going to play. You still, get, you still get a check. You know what I'm saying? You get, you get arrested you know, uh, for unpaid parking tickets and after you got a mug shot flying around everywhere. Now you're right, and now you consider it difficult to work with. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's totally... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. Um, yeah. Okay, so going back to the DMs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we made it past the yeah. DM phase. Everybody out there in Exxon McCall world is about to send you a hello. So, um, yeah, tell them to send it. I'll respond back and say hello back. Now, you did it to yourself. I didn't see. Yeah, okay, when, when, I, when I can. I'm very, listen, I'm a very grateful person. Okay. I'm very... Um, listen, I'm, I mean, I will respond if I can respond. But, <laughs> there you go. But, yes. But I there try my go. best. I'm one of those people, like, my publicist get mad, gets mad at me all the time because she's like, I'll send her information from somebody. And she's like, you can't be responding. To you know, and I'm like, I know it's just hard because I'm just very, like, very grateful. Personal. You know, yeah, especially in this industry because people don't have to like you. You know what I'm saying? That is like, true. in football, whether you like me or not, if I'm scoring touchdowns, I'm putting up numbers. Yeah, because it's your team. I'm helping your team, whether you like me or not. And acting and, 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 and being a producer and, 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 you know, I have a tech company and, and I have a lot of different things outside of football. You know, people don't like you, then they don't have to support you. So okay. that's why when I see people that, 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 you know, aren't humble or they act a certain kind of way, I'm like, yo, you know, they could just, like, turn you off. You can leave tomorrow. Exactly. Yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. You're not going to distract me from my dating questions, though, Thomas, just so you know. What, I distract you? You're not going to distract me. So, <laughs> DMs, boom, phone calls. I take it you're good on the phone because you're very good at interview, by the way. Thank you. First date. What's the ideal first date look like? Mm, ideal first date? Mm. Just intimate conversation. Could be anywhere. Because at the end of the day, I mean, where we are is just a backdrop. Right. We're in a nice, have a connection. Yeah, if we're in a nice restaurant, that's cool, but what are we talking about? You know what I'm saying? Like what what are we what are we talking about exactly? You know, mm -hmm. and where are we going exactly? Mm -hmm. Um, are we even compatible enough to, to to move forward? Um, because there might be some like, you know, fundamental differences that we have that we figure out on the first date that so I'm more concerned with the person, you know what I'm saying, than 
than where we are. But, you know, if I did have to pick a place, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, but if I did have, because yeah. I'm gonna, I got my next question ready. I'm ready. Yeah, it, it would be, <laughs> it would be, um, obviously grabbing something to eat because I think when you when you're eating, it kind of takes away a little bit of the, the uh, gives you something to do as you, yeah, and then talking. So that could be anywhere. It could be, you know, the restaurant. It could be um, a picnic. It could, it could be, it could be anything. It could be anything where we're just. You know, having some food and, and uh, just connecting. Yeah, just connecting. Yeah. So we asked your castmate, uh, Tyler. We asked him about going Dutch, and it was it, it was trending. It was very very important subject matter, if you will. Oh. Do you believe? What are your thoughts on going Dutch on a date? Um, I think that you know, I'm one of those people that you know I don't I don't really think about um, who pays. Mm -hmm. And like I'm, uh, of course, you know I have five sisters and my mom, so I'm 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 gonna pay, you know, mm -hmm. what I'm wherever we're going to eat. Um, and I'm just like when the bill comes. I, to be honest, I don't even think about it. the bill comes. Like, oh, you know, hopefully I'm engaged in conversation to where I'm not even paying attention to when the bill comes. Right. You know? And that's how focused I am on yeah. on conversation what we're talking about. Um, but no, I I pay. You know what I'm saying? I I pay on the first date. Um, I think that that's. Um, a sign of respect and 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 it's being a gentleman, you know what I'm saying? Um, but if if someone pulled out their card to pay, I wouldn't let them. Mm -hmm. But I would be turned on. Oh, okay. See, there you go. That's more information for your your DMs, ladies. Yeah. Um, I, I, sex on the first date is that a is that a yes or no, <laughs> or does it matter? <laughs> uh, <laughs> sex on the first date. Mm -hmm. Um. Anything can happen. Okay. Anything can happen. Now, does that determine for you whether or not there's relationship potential there or not? Um, that's a great question. Well, thank you. So, that's a great question <laughs> because that could actually kind of ruin the potential. But because you know, depending on how it is. You know, how the, the sex thing. is or the fact that you yeah, decided yeah. to have sex with me? No, before. not how. No, listen, I'm not a, I don't judge anybody. Listen, okay. you're a grown woman. Mm -hmm. I'm a grown man. We grown ups. You know what I'm saying? We, we do what grown ups do. Right. Um, I'm just saying like, you know, depending on how much uh, a, a fan of sex you are, mm -hmm. if it's if it's bad, then it could, you know, you could look at somebody different. Because, you know, that means later on, you're going to either have to teach them what you want them to know or mm -hmm. it's a no-go. So you got to base that strictly off of the relationship. Um, and a lot of people have a hard time doing that. Um, for me, I'm a, I would consider myself a very sexual person when it comes to, like, um, just women. I love women. I love everything about women. I love their, their lips, their eyes, their legs, their um, the feminine energy. Because I, I would consider myself a man's man in a lot of ways. And so I'm really attracted to, to, to women, you know what I'm saying? That it's just what they give off. Mm -hmm. Um, and that translates, um, sexually, you know what I'm saying? As, as well. Um, so I don't go into relationships or, or, you know, situations looking at that. Um, because I, I do think that that part of it is, is, uh, is something that could, you know, potentially mess up what you're trying to do potentially it doesn't it, it doesn't mean that it will but it is something that you have to have to consider um but i also want to respect the woman like i don't you know what i'm saying um which is why i said clarity you know when you when you clarity when you have clarity then you know you leave it up to the other person to decide what they want to do mm -hmm. um so i don't go into it with like oh so what are we doing like <laughs> If I did that, if I did that, that's what I would do. I'd be like, yo, it's, 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 it's. I don't, <laughs> I don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, because at the end of the day, she's gonna do what she want to do. You know what I'm saying? And and if your conversation is is intriguing enough, and if, if that's what happens, then that's that's what happens. But I'm not pressed for it. You know what I'm saying? How long? How long does it take you to realize, um, because we have an article right now on Excel on the poll um, where a gentleman says it, took, it usually takes 90 days to realize if, if 
the per the woman's relationship potential or not, right? Mm -hmm. Now, my father has a theory that if you go on a first date by by the by dessert, you know if you want more from this woman or not. Yeah. What are, what is what's your time frame? Like if you are like, okay, this person's gonna be in the friend zone, it's gonna be a jump off, it's gonna be a relationship, like how long do you usually give yourself to make that determination? I think where I'm, where I am in my life right now, I think it depends on where you are in your life yeah. too. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't, I don't think that could be a general state. I don't think anything could be a general statement. Mm -hmm. Um, I definitely think after, you know, an initial conversation, but that comes with when you know what you want, you know what I'm but saying? You clearly know what you want. Um, I, I, I wouldn't say I know what I want. I, I would say what I, I would say that I know what I don't want. Okay, you know and, and that's that so, just as important. Yes, just that as important. Just as important. Yeah. That's actually easier when you don't know what you because when you when you know what you don't want, then you leave the option open for other things that you didn't even know you wanted or needed. True. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so um I can I can definitely, you know, I can have dinner with someone or meet with someone and tell if it's some drastic things. Like if you if if you if the con if the conversation is just like not you know uh, inspiring me in any way or or um, making me feel as though you know um, we're a good match because your interests aren't aren't the same as mine, um, then it, it probably it's probably not going to go any further because that means that we would have to work on fundamental issues, which is mm -hmm. you know what matters to us. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's a waste of, not my time, waste of someone else's time. And that's what I say now. It's like, I don't want to waste your time. You know what I'm saying? Um, to people. It's like, I don't want to waste your time because I know that we're probably not compatible enough to move forward. And if we move forward, you know, sexually, then, you know, then you might, that, because also the thing with, with, with a sexual situation is that you might create some false energy right so if you know you're not feeling somebody and you have sex with them anyway um even if you told them you know what it is you know you could still create some false energy right. that leads to you know disconnection and confusion Absolutely. you know what i'm saying so i've learned uh over my lifetime mm -hmm. to you know if i realize that that's not what it is is to just keep it moving respectfully do you think you're ready to be in a relationship another relationship um i think i, I think um i think my time is is you know i'm so focused on on acting and producing in this new world that i found um and technology and my, i have a mobile app for talent that that it just keeps me busy and i love it you know i love i love not being seen as a football player right right you know what i'm saying it, it just it like you know i'm an, i'm i'm a black man black uh, men as an entrepreneur. You know what I'm saying? So and, and that means you're not ready for a relationship? Was I dodging the question? I mean, you you were on the field again. Yeah, I didn't know what field. to do. I was, I, I, was ju I was juking. I was trying to juke the question. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but wait, look, I'm a Capricorn woman who's been asking questions for a long time. I'm like, mm-hmm. Uh, I heard I that. Just, well, look, at this time, at this time, probably not. Like I said, anything can happen. You know what I'm saying? I'm 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 open to whatever makes sense. But it just has to be something that, that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? And, and and time wise, I think too, you have to be fair to someone because the most valuable thing you can give is your time. You know what I'm saying? It's the most valuable thing. And I know that is what a lot of women that I've dealt with and that I talk to want is time. You know what I'm saying? Because when you when you give them time, it means you care. It means that you 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 know you value um, their presence. Mm -hmm. And if you can't give that, and you knowing to get into something, then that's your fault. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I, think I, believe... about, I think also too, it's about knowing that someone's made room for you in their life. Yes. You know what right. I mean? Right, yeah. right, right, right. I mean, right. I don't want to sit on the sofa and look at somebody all day either. Like, I need you to be busy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Go, go be busy. Yeah. But you want to make sure, you want to feel like you, somebody made room for you. Right. So I, I get that. Right. Like you said, um, make time, make time. Yeah, make, make time. time in their room, in their schedule. Yeah, make room for them. Do you want to get married and have a family one day? I definitely, I definitely think that, you know, that is is in the cards for me. 
You know what I'm saying? Um, I just know that it has to be the right situation. Because also growing up, you know, seeing your mom and dad, you know, go through tough times and come out on top is motivation because, yeah. you know, you see that as something that, that, that you potentially could have. But then also going through 12 years of NFL locker rooms and seeing the total opposite spectrum of that where it's, right. you know what I'm saying? It's, it's you know, those relationships didn't work out like that is also a reality. Mm -hmm. So not only did I have my sisters, but I also had other guys sitting in my locker next to me as an example of what potentially could be, you know what I'm saying? And so, you know, I think I've been fortunate enough to make it to this point in my life where, you know, I'm, I'm able to kind of sit on the perch and look down and kind of see things more clear, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And, and understand how fortunate I am to, to be in this situation. So I don't want to um, make any decision that's, that's not going to be, um, you know, best for me and best for for the other person. And obviously, we're not. I'm not a fortune teller. I don't know what's going to happen. You know what I'm saying in the future. You know what I'm saying. So everything love is love is a, is a is a risk. You know what I'm saying. And it's worth the risk. You know what I'm saying. You just have to be smart and as smart as you can anyway in in the person that you choose. Because you know, if you have a if you have the chance like I do to be able to pick something that makes sense with all this knowledge I have now after going through all these you know, good times and bad times in relationships, you know, then, then it's up to me to pick the, the right person. And, and if I don't, then, then that's on me. What's the biggest lesson you learned? Um, it could be just a, a lesson in general or a lesson you've learned about yourself from a past relationship. Uh, the biggest lesson I learned from myself. It could be about like being in relationships or like about how Thomas is in a relationship. Um, I mean, I've learned a lot of things, mm -hmm. you know, it couldn't just be, it couldn't just be one thing. I've learned so much from, mm -hmm. from those relationships. I mean, about, like I said earlier, patience, um, you know, sometimes Leo's are very, you know, uh, you know, we're very, we're very, we can be stubborn sometimes, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So I had to learn um, how to, to not, how to really truly, be open to a different perspective, you know what I'm saying? And and see that as a real option and not just lip service. You know what I'm saying? Um, and that and those things help with growth because, you know, being accountable for your own actions and being accountable which for what you say and do and how you make somebody feel feel takes pressure off of you. Mm -hmm. Because now it's not on you anymore because you you acknowledged it genuinely and you and you were accountable for whatever you did in that situation. And that's what I live by now. Um before I didn't fully live by that, you know, not in, not in relationships, you know what I'm saying? Um, I did in everything else, football, discipline, you know, if you're a dude on my team and you drop the ball or, you know, you, you miss a tackle, if I didn't see you working extra at the facility like I was, you know, I'm, I'm going to call you out and I'll make you accountable. Right, right. But I wasn't doing the same thing for myself in a lot of ways, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, and now I'm 100% accountable for everything. And and because it's it's it frees you emotionally, it frees you 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 mentally. Um, you know, it, it gives you a chance to actually continue to grow because there's no ceiling on growth as a person. Right, right. You know what I mean? So I'm thankful for every relationship that I was in. And um, you know, I had some really intense relationships, you know what I'm saying, where I thought I was gonna get married and and you know, things didn't work. Did you actually and, go and buy the ring? Um, no, I didn't go and buy the ring. One time I almost did. But what stopped you? Uh, because I knew, I knew that we weren't supposed to be together, mm -hmm. but but we loved each other so much that it was like we didn't want to not, yeah, we didn't we didn't want to be away from each other because it was like, you know, it was the love versus reality situation, and and it was a tough it was tough, you know what I'm saying it was very it was a very tough situation very tough breakup, um, but. I learned a lot from it. And like I said, I was going to, you know, because sometimes people I think get married too because they figure that it will, will will fix it. And this person in particular actually told me, you know, that they, you know, wanted to get married. And I'm like, well, you know, there's things that we have have to fix first. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like we, we're not on the same page and, and if we get married, it's gonna make it worse. You know what I'm saying? But they were like, well, sometimes when you get married, things just work themselves out. 
No, you know what I'm saying? And I, yeah, and I was like, I almost bought into it because mm -hmm. because of the love. But you know, yeah, at the last yeah. minute, I was like, nah, you know what? That's not. I just got to deal with this separation anxiety. I got to deal with this pain because mm -hmm. that's gonna make it worse. And I love you too much to 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 do that and then hate you later. Absolutely. No, no. Um, yeah. I appreciate all the honesty. Um, Instagram Live is not going to cut me off, though, before I get these questions in. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's what's not going to happen today. Okay, so we have our fast round. It's, a, it's fun. Okay. I'm not going to take it easy on you, though. So are you ready to play our fast round? Yes. As okay. ready as I'm going to be. Huh? As ready as I'm going to be, knowing you. Yes. Yeah, you're used to 200-pound men throwing themselves at you. <laughs> you're fine. You're good. You're totally, uh, let's, totally let's good. Go. Okay, so I'm going to give you two options. You have to pick uh, the one you like the most. This is what we call our X or O round, right? Okay, okay. The first one, kissing during sex, X or O? X means no? X, we'll say X is a no. X is a no? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Because believe it or not, X on the Code audience, Thomas, there was like a whole debate. I think it was on like Mark Lamont Hill's Instagram page. This guy was like upset that people were kissing during sex. Y'all go look him up. Make sure y'all never do that. Yeah, maybe. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they needed a minute or something. I don't know. Um, I don't know. That could be a part of it. Me, I'm. You're I'm, concerned about the men? No, I'm saying true. maybe that's what he. Maybe that's why he didn't want. You know, he was upset with people kissing. Maybe they had <laughs> bad brothers. I mean, they're already. Think, you know what? Listen. Know. No, 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 no. Listen. I'm. I'm all in. <laughs> when it comes to that, I'm all in. Me personally, I'm. I'm all in. All right. Sex in public places. Is that an X or an O? Um, oh. So, oh, okay. Sex on the beach or on or in a park? Which one do you prefer? Beach. Beach? Yeah. Why? Because you live in Miami and these are things you've done? No. Well, um, the, the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> you like that saying, right? That was, that was you like good. that, that saying. The ocean, good. the sound of the waves, the water is just mm -hmm. peaceful when you're standing out there. It's even more peaceful when you, you know, enjoying some of the uh, scenery. Uh, the, the, yeah, the scenery. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the scenery. Mm -hmm. Airplane or car? Car. Because you can't fit in that airplane bathroom. You're kind of a big guy. No. I, I, I'm, I, don't, I don't really like flying either. So, uh, really? Yeah. I don't really like flying. Uh, you like, I feel like you should fly like often, I, but I don't like it. But I I have to. So okay, okay. Have you had to fly yet during um the pandemic? Mm, yeah, I had to fly back one time to L.A. and uh, I just kept looking around the whole time with my mask. Usually I sleep on the flight. <laughs> how I kind of get through it. I I, I catch a red eye mm -hmm. or I catch the early flight, stay up all night. But uh, everybody having a mask on was just mad it's with. Yeah, it's intense. So yeah. It's intense. I was fly I flew through LAX and it was empty and I was like, I don't like this. I feel like yeah. I'm in a bad movie. Yeah. The airport being empty is 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 weird. It's, it just yeah. it feels like I'm in an apocalypse movie or something. I don't really want to be there. Yeah, and I don't do statistics, so no. Um <laughs> well you kind of answered this one. Uh balcony or pool? Mm. Balcony. Balcony. Okay, yeah. so you like balconies, oceans, cars. You're a little bit of a risk taker. That's yeah. really and also, what, what did you say? Football side coming out. It's football side coming out. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. also, don't you have an, like a new project or a new project that you just sold or something, like a big scoop that you wanted to give me? Oh, yeah. I have a TV show um, that I sold um, through my production company with my producing partner, Deji LeRae. Uh, we can't give the details yet. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I, I can't do it, you know. I, I can't. I would tell you if I would tell anybody, I would tell you. But okay, Exo Nicole, y'all heard that. Y'all heard that. I'll tell you. I'll tell you uh, right before the announcement comes out. But it's a really, really dope project, a dope show um, that I'm producing with my uh, producer partner, starring in it. Uh, probably in the next couple of weeks, there'll be, be a press release out. Um, I'm excited about it through our production company. So we have another feature film that we're finishing up funding for um, that I'll be starring in and. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm pushing my own um, content. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's 2020, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm looking at people like Issa Rae that went to, you know, Awkward Black Girl, and now she's one of the biggest stars in Hollywood because she believed in herself, and that's inspiration. Um, as well as I have a mobile 
um, platform too called Castar, and okay. and it's a it's a network. Right now, we're only available in LA um, and on iPhones, but it's a mobile platform for talent uh, in the underserved communities, women, um, people of color, LGBTQ mm -hmm. plus communities to find jobs, network with each other, oh, um, get get you know what I'm saying, find yeah, submit to jobs, any job in the entertainment industry, um, network with each other. You know, you put you can put your resume up there, your headshots, your digital content, your, you know, everything and and connect with people. Um, that's what I'm doing right now. You know, I'm just focused on like helping as many people as I can, um, even with my production company. You know, I have some really great actor friends that, you know, go through the Hollywood shuffle. You know what I'm saying? And, and I'm pulling them up and putting them on my shows. Mm -hmm. um, that's the, the beauty of having your access to your own content and your, and your own platforms. You know what I'm saying? You can you can hire who you want, you know, so. Before Instagram cuts me off, I just want to thank you. And I also fully expect you to tell me how many people are in your DMs within the next 24 hours. <laughs> if you uh, don't tell me, I'm not going to speak to you again. I yeah, be, uh, one thing about me is I'm brutally honest, sometimes to a fault. <laughs> so uh, be I get that criticism all number. the time. I just say, oh. And I yeah, that's yeah. the only way to be. Save your time. It's the best way to be. Save it's the best time. way to be. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. Excellent, Nicole audience. Thank you so much.